Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. This is Johannes So, the chairman of FIRA, and we just want to give you some background from where we started to where we are today. And uh, why is this virus spreading and other diseases spreading that affects our economy? Let me start by, I grew up within the funeral industry. I was exposed to the funeral industry for the past 50 years. Um, it, starting within the funeral industry in the mid-80s and ending as executive of a large funeral company in the early 2000s. I was requested by the South African Council of Churches to assist them with a research which we've done um, from our own um, in-house research. Uh, that emanated into a report that was published um, and given through to the South African Council of Churches, after which we went public with this and we had an 87% public vote on South African television, um, on Mudise K9, um, and the producer at that stage was um, Mr. Tim Mudise. The problem that we foresee here is that hasn't really had any effect. Um, and at that stage, we wanted to look at establishing a consumer watchdog, which didn't exist. Isabel, the late Isabel Jones approached me through the Financial Services Board, the FSB at those days, and we gave them some advice because they didn't understand the impact of the operational threats onto the economy. We're currently in the process of ass assisting with a research report called Whom Owns Whom, um, just as much as we've given our input on Finmark, Finscope, all these reports, including Whom Owns Whom at a previous stage. But nothing has really happened after that. Um, after we went public, uh, a tender was issued by uh, Gauteng government. After a petition was submitted to former President Mandela, to um, Mr. Tokyo Sekhwale, the Premier at that stage in Gauteng, um, and that emanated into a tender being issued, which um, it was provided, and everyone tried to apply for it, including lawyers um, and tenderpreneurs. Um, they couldn't manage it. So I was then contacted on the recommendation of the South African Council of Churches to uh, Mr. Uhuru Muhilwa of Gauteng Legislature. He was the chief whip at that stage. We had an engagement, and I was headhunted um, to write the law for the funeral industry. Since 2007, 2008, uh, we have, after we've written this, we still requested government that we needed to look at uh, creating a standard operational procedure, which they haven't done. Uh, we've been made a variety of empty promises. Since 2000, 2007, 2008, up to date, we're talking 10, 12 years later, nothing has been happening. Um, in terms of the South African constitution, um, Cocta is in charge of the funeral industry, uh, referring to section 2295B of the constitution. Solga, unfortunately, does not have the capacity to um, manage these processes. Neither does the provinces have any authority, neither the municipalities. The municipalities each has their own set of laws, um, and there's no standard. Um, and they only refer to the Health Act. But there's 12 other acts that oversees the funeral industry. Because of the fragmentation resorting other, all, under all the departments, we are struggling because there's no cohesion, there's no working relationship with all the departments. It's almost like everyone is creating their own little kingdoms and thinking that they know what to do. We have approached uh, the Department of Health. We've approached the Presidency. We've approached the Department of Labor, Environment, Sanitation, Justice, uh, the Law Reform Commission, Services CETA, um, and every department that really uh, impacts on the funeral industry, including the Road Accident Fund and SASA. Uh, nothing has happened. And we said to everyone, we needed one single law because they can't only refer to the Health Act into a certificate of compliance. They need to incorporate all the laws into one set standard. The biggest problem that we foresee is that there is no implementation of these laws, um, and that's the, the, the that's the main problem. Um, there's not a single law. There's not impl a proper implementation. There's no licensing body. There's no regulator. Only the only regulator there is, which is um, 
able and willing uh, to do it is the Financial Services Board, which also do not have the capacity to act proactive. Although they've got the best laws in the world, uh, they can't do it. They rely on administrators and brokers and insurance companies to be their eyes and their ears and funeral associations, which is not regulated themselves, but is being referred to in the law to oversee certain aspects, which is not happening. Um, because of their vested interests. Um, and it, and it, in most cases, they are just chasing membership, but literally not giving any support. And that's a challenge. It's not that we are better than anyone else or that an association can do better than us. The problem is we are focusing from Feed Our Funeral Industry Reformed Association on the key objectives to assist the industry and our members and ultimately um, assist the public by doing that. We want to create a national network of legitimate licensed funeral parlors. Government doesn't have a proper database. Home Affairs don't have that. Financial Services Board don't have that. And if we don't have these measures in place, you can't control it. Uh, government is losing huge income um, because each and every association, including ourselves, want to try and self-regulate it because of government not doing what they're supposed to do. Political parties that we've engaged, and we've engaged everyone, is unfortunately leaving the problem areas to government. And we sometimes get the idea that they don't involve government or don't tell government what is happening uh, for them to have something to hit onto the ruling party. This is not about party politics, people. This is about people's lives. People's lives are, are at stake. And we need to take hands, we need to join hands and tackle this problem collectively. And let me just give you some idea. What are some of the threats that we're experiencing which is not combated? And with the disaster that we've got nowadays with the corona and the Ebola and the HIV AIDS and hepatitis, um, virus encephalitis, um, tuberculosis is the highest uh, death rate in South Africa. Um, we need to look at how do we combat that? How do we stop that? And we've got the solution for each and every problem within the funeral industry. One, we've got a graveyard problem. Um, we need to look at how do we combat that? Uh, we cannot expect uh, African communities to go and cremate because that's against their culture. So what do we do? We build a mausoleum, which will save land. It will also save crematoriums. It will save uh, people's lives. Um, and we can combat the potential health hazards. Because just remember, a coffin is not SABS approved. It doesn't absorb the fluid. So where does that fluid go? It goes into our underground drinking water. That's one problem. When people go and uh, certify deceased, the d document that need to be completed, deceased fingerprint needs to go onto that document. Potentially a disease or a person that died of a disease, not being stated on the death certificate. That document then goes from the funeral parlor to the family, from the family to home affairs, from home affairs to the head office. There's a whole chain of events that's happening, and the document is possibly infected. Um, and that spreads diseases, because home affairs allows any funeral parlor to become a registrar of deaths, but they don't go and look at how these funeral parlors operate. Um, there's no standard that really exists, um, and it's li very limited. So that's one of the other angles that we've got, the problems we've got. There is a waste management policy, but it's not implemented. So syringes, gloves, is not being incinerated. Uh, funeral parlors do not have uh, incinerators. They do not have sterilizers or autoclave machines. So that's a problem, because they utilize medical equipment and they use it over and over and over and over and again, because it's not really stipulated. And even if it's stipulated, it's not implemented. Um, from a health, of sa health and safety point of view, um, the legislation refers to ventilation, but how much ventilation do you need into a specific mortuary or specific? It's not defined. I can tell you that I personally lost eight funeral staff that had contracts with the TB hospital. And that impacts not only on the funeral industry, but it impacts on government. People don't have a medical aid, so they go to the hospital, the government hospital. Um, they've got a funeral insurance, so it impacts on the uh, insurance industry. So that's another problem. 
Uh, the critical factor is um, formaldehyde is utilized in a mortuary. It's a chemical. Uh, and water emanating from a mortuary do not go into your municipal systems. It goes into the storm water. Now, if we look at the rural areas, all that blood infected, chemical infected water, which is highly infectious, uh, with the underlying issues of formaldehyde, which is the cause of the the highest cause of cancer in South Africa and in the world goes into our natural water. So what happens then? Goes into our rivers and our dams. Rural communities, farming communities, is utilizing that very same water for their crop and their animals. In some communities, because of our past and the history of our past, um, is utilizing the rivers to wash their clothes. So the disease is just spreading. If we look at the increase in cancer, um, that's possibly one of the reasons. Because the water that you drink and which you bath in is possibly infected. Uh, and there's no research that's been done except ourselves. That's got a research report consisting of almost 600 pages. We've already, from ourselves, um, compiled a standard operating procedure that incorporates all the laws. It's not in existence. The training modules utilized by CETA um, doesn't include the laws. Um, they had a research um, document going out and we said that we will assist them. Um, it absolutely didn't happen. So how can people be trained um, if they don't understand that their laws gives the guidelines? If the, um, the health inspectors, the funeral industry, home affairs, labor, nobody's um, uh, trained in terms thereof. Um, even the municipal inspectors, they want to enforce something but they're not trained. Um, and they only look at the health aspects. They do not look at everything uh, that's supposed to be within the law. And that's why we've been criticizing government and inspectorates because there's no standards, not in SACWA, not in the universities, not in services CETA, not in provinces, national government, provincial government, not even the World Health Organization has got standards. And that's the type of critical things that we need to look at. How do we stop that? We need to look at our waste management policies, people, it exists, but it, it's not implemented. How do we look at um, the zoning and the planning, the spatial planning? Funeral parlors are operating in residential areas. There's airborne diseases. And because these messages are not carried over to political leadership and uh, being held back by possibly uh, people that's got vested interest, nothing is really happening. And now let's not ask ourselves why is this virus spreading as it's doing throughout the world. It's not only in South Africa, but throughout the world. We are there to prepare and we prepare to assist and advise. But we're not prepared to be the yellow pages of the funeral industry anymore. Or financial service companies, research companies and government. If you want our services, you approach us, we enter into agreement and we will assist you. Um, and how to combat these kind of things. Um, many ministers has engaged us directly, political leaders from all um, political parties engaged us, but effectively nothing has been done. It remains empty words. Now let's ask ourselves, if the funeral industry is regulated, banking and financial institutions would assist them to get to the standard where they're supposed to be. Um, I believe, and I'm open and honest, I don't believe that any funeral in parlor in South Africa, doesn't matter who they are, complies 100% to the law. Um, and that includes your smaller, medium and larger companies. And we're not specifically referring to any funeral company, but it, it's not happening. Um, it's, we don't have a funeral parlor that can really um, honestly state that they can combat, um, combat any disease. Just remember, um, African families go in and they go and dress their loved ones on a Friday prior to a funeral, a so-called night virgil. They're not protected. They do not know of what their loved one passed away. It's possibly HIV AIDS or tuberculosis. They touch that deceased. Wash him, um, dress him. What happens if they don't know? Or if they operate in a funeral parlor which is non-compliant or stores with someone, we are spreading diseases. And that impacts not only on the funeral industry, but on government and our health system and um, 
the financial service company. We saw blood running into waters in Kuruman. We had a television show um, a few years ago on, on Focus, which clearly stipulated that there's no controls. Uh, there's a lot of things that was noted on that television program. The transportation of the siege, which is not effectively done. People are utilizing embalming methods, which is not really working. They inject it into the muscle. It's a medical procedure, so it's incorrect. And that's why we are there. We, we don't have an independent training facility in South Africa. Not one um, that refers to the funeral industry or relates to the funeral industry. Uh, everyone utilizes a mortuary or a funeral parlor to conduct the um, their training. Um, and that is that is not right. Uh, there's a lot of things that's happening um, that could we could address on. But the health threats at this point in time is excessive. And we need to stop that. We've given these reports through to all the departments, including to the presidency, the Speaker of Parliament, NCOP, Health, Labour, um, COCTA, uh, the Financial Services Board, Services CETA, and everyone is just turning a blind eye. And we just ask ourselves why. We are prepared to share our experience and our research with government in Parliament, with each and every political party. But we seek your assistance to drive the process. We are facing a national and international dis disaster. Not even the European countries or America has got um, standards in place that could solve all the problems because it doesn't exist. So that's why we are saying we as South Africans are entrepreneurs. We've made life-changing decisions, operations, if we refer back to Chris Barnard um, and many others. Why can't we be the country that affects the change? It will create economic opportunities. It will create jobs. The, this industry has never been um, transformed and developed to its full potential because data doesn't exist, not even in services CETA or SAT South Africa. There's no proper database. And if we don't have that in place, how can we monitor, evaluate and implement what we're supposed to do? Government, unfortunately, needs to realize we need the following thing in summary and in closure. We need one law that incorporates all the laws, enabling us to issue a certificate of compliance which is with the paper that it's written on. Currently, it means nothing. Secondly, we need to have an independent employer's organization. We need a union that protects funeral industry employees. There's approximately 80,000 of them. 30,000 employers. That's what our research has proven. Although uh, people differ with us, they need to be ombudsmen. We also wrote that. It was opposed by uh, individual associations um, and companies said that they, that they support it, but behind the closed doors, they don't support it. Um, we're sitting with a number of court cases which we have to address because we're trying to do what government is supposed to do. We need a bargaining council, and we need a court that looks at environmental and health and safety issues, which doesn't exist. We pride ourselves that we're looking after the rights of employees, but we don't have that in place. We don't have inspectors in place. There's no swap test done at a funeral parlor. And if it's done, please release that. Uh, we understand that the same thing is, uh, occurs within Government mortuaries and hospital mortuaries, the people are not inoculated. There is no proper systems in place. And people, I plead with you, from my personal perspective, over and above the fact that I'm utilized as um, an informant or um, a consultant in many aspects, people are not addressing these issues, including government. And we need to reach out to government and say to them, how could we assist you? We've got a solution to each and every problem including uh, the gaps and challenges, which does not exist in uh, legislation. Um, it, creates, it could create 93 business opportunities within the value chain. This industry is not 9 billion or 10 billion rand worth. If we look at the total value chain, we are looking at an industry of 200 billion rand per annum, which is not regulated, which is not supported, which is not transformed, which is not assisting government, which is not assisting the industry, 
and it's not assisting the public. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day.